Let's listen to the story. My wife is cheating on me on Valentine's Day. I am crushed right now. Now I have a reason to hate Valentine's Day. This morning, before leaving for work, I saw my wife's notification light flashing, so I checked. It was a message from a private number, so I read through all the messages. The messages were from the nights before and here and how some went. Hey, can't wait to see you tomorrow. My husband is going to work, so we have all morning long. Look, wear something like this for me tomorrow, baby. I want to be inside you already, especially inside your own house. I will do anything you want me to do for you in bed. I'm doing specially for you. I don't even do it for my husband. We have been together for 12 years total, and we had plans to have kids already in the family. I took pictures of the chat with my phone since I think this is most likely ending in a divorce. I decided to, to go home early and walked into my house silently, and it was confirmed they were cheating on my bed. I left without making a noise, and I had a big, beautiful rose for her. I cut a small part of my wrist and left some blood on the paper with the rose, and I wrote a note for her saying, here is your love. I drove off to a local store and bought whiskey and swishes, and I packed up half an ounce of my drawner from a friend. I drove to a mountain that has a cliff of the whole city, and right now, I'm here and she's texting and calling me like she's desperate. I'm losing my mind right, my mind here. I'm still up here just looking at the lights and I feel like my world just ended. I hate the thought of myself now and I just feel like I don't even belong here anymore. Wow, I want to be inside you already. We have built a relationship for over 12 years and all of a sudden I just realized that that passion that I had for you has been crushed. You are welcome to another session of your most talked about TV talk show on New World TV, The Daily Trend. Today we are going to talk about cheating. Why would you want to cheat on a partner? And if you have been cheated on by your partner, how many times will you be willing to forgive that partner? Welcome back from the short break. Today in the studio with me are uh, to my right. Ellie Plima Dehe. And Evelyn Asante. And as I said at the introductory part, we're going to talk about cheating. From the letter that we've read, you realize that it's a couple of about 12 years yes. who build their lives together. And all of a sudden, one of them realizes that something has gone wrong. Yeah. But before then, let's get the concept about cheating. What is cheating itself? What do we say cheating is? I think cheating, when you create any emotional attachment with someone else, either than your partner, is cheating. And it, it could vary. Cheating, there are a lot of ways of cheating in a relationship. Okay. So I, if I get you right, we have emotional cheating and sexual cheating. There are so many of them. Okay. So it means cheating is an unfair or dishonesty on one part of a person against the other part. Exactly. Okay. So if you create any emotional link or physical link with another person who is not your partner, then we can call it cheating. Okay. Then why at all do people cheat if that's the case? No, wait, before we get to that topic, if you say cheating is only when you have an intimate relationship with a partner, when we come down to the school, you see you have an examination. And those who actually um, more practice in the exams, it can also be termed as cheating. Yeah, that's this when you lack an aspect, then you want to gain it from another part of I it. I understand you, but then the the uh, people writing the exams and the lectures, they don't have an intimate relationship. Yes, but we're talking about cheating in relation to relationship, okay. where there's a relationship, okay? So a romantic relationship. It means sort. cheating in general means an unfair practice, mm -hmm. but in relationship, it deals with an unfair practice against another partner. Okay. Yes. Okay. And that is so then, why do people cheat? First of all, when we come to our world today, there are a lot of reasons why people cheat. You ask 
a partner why he cheated and some will tell you that they, they no longer feel loved. They don't have that feeling, that passionate feeling that you had when they entered into the relationship first. And also it's like they feel neglected. The other partner is doing something that is occupying his time, taking his time or her away, time, or her time mm. from the partner. And it's like looking at that scenario, I think even though it shouldn't push you to cheat, being in that circumstance, you can actually be pushed to cheat. I'm a lady here, but if I'm permitted to be a bit biased, I'll say guys in general are naturally cheaters, in quotes. This is because guys are always attracted to, by, um, attracted to what they see. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And cheating is not necessarily being with the person. If I'm thinking about that person, having that feeling of being with another person, I would term it as cheating. But I think you're, 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 you're well, you, are, you said you want to be biased, but yes. you realize that from the letter that we read, it was the woman was who was who cheated. actually cheating. This, that why, that's why this time I'm talking about the guys also cheating. Yes, but I think our own, maybe it may be a bit natural, especially in the African context, you don't really consider, it's not really a very big deal to have a partner. So I'm trying to say you want to have variety and it's, it's actually good. Mm. It's also a form of cheating. It's a form of cheating, but the danger is that the ladies are good at hiding. Those the guys cheat. also are good at hiding. We can easily be caught. That's a problem. No, we are not, we are not no, no, no. Guys here are good at hiding because guys normally keep their feelings to themselves. They keep issues to themselves. They try to man things themselves. But when you talk about ladies, a little thing we have to discuss or we have to depend on someone else for advice and stuff. So when it comes to cheating, I think it is easy to uh, to catch a lady cheating than to catch a guy no, cheating. No, I don't I'm tell very, you to. No, not at all. For a lady, not a lady can be very discreet. She can actually hide something from the guy, and the guy will never know that she's cheating in the very house that he has staying in. You know, someone sent me a WhatsApp message that there was a scenario where a lady introduced two guys, mm-hmm. and she's actually in relation with the two of them. So she was with one and said, hey, uh, meet my sweetheart. <laughs> then the other one said, meet my boo. <laughs> and the guys actually saluted each other. Hey, Jack, how far? <laughs> Obviously. There's so, also another scenario where the lady was, uh, should I say, yeah, they were staying together. But then, you know, she wasn't having any proof on the phone that the guy could use to catch her that she's, she's actually cheating on him. So it's like she's cheating outside there. She goes out lies to the guy that she's going to her mom's place or somewhere and she goes to the other guy's place she lies to the other guy that she's going to do something going to work or something then she goes to the other one so it's like okay when i understand all those things because normally it is the ladies who are being termed as cheaters or they are really known to be cheaters that's because we are vulnerable and our cases mostly come out and you know the guys they wouldn't come out and tell that they were cheaters. what has vulnerability got to do with your desire to cheat on the, your the fact that you have somebody to comfort you, the fact that the society is backing you, and it's it will actually allow the lady to come out to talk about her, her cases. For okay. the guys, they wouldn't just come out like that. Okay, so I think we we'll, would we'll, we'll, we'll like to look at, say, take a views of some of the people, some people, what they think about cheating is, and what can actually yeah. make them want to cheat on their partners. We'll be back. Talking of cheating, I would say cheating is when one sees being faithful to his or her partner and as a lady i will talk about our part a lady sees being um, faithful to a partner when the partner is not able to cater for her financially either the person being a stingy partner or the person is financially weak yeah so when the person starts getting gifts and surprises from other people then the person would love to look to that direction especially when you have friends who have rich boyfriends or who have people who provide for them who would love to get seen and then the another reason could be that if the, you are, the lady is not getting attention from their boyfriend ladies love attention so if we see if we are not getting those things from our, our boyfriends we look elsewhere to where we get the attention from and then you cheat and you cheat not because you don't love the person but then you cheat because some circumstances had pushed you to that place yeah 
cheating is a way of not showing loyalty or fidelity to your partner and it can be come in so many ways for example deleting certain messages just because you don't want your partner to see and you know that message can cause a kind of disagreement and i think that in regards to cheating in a relationship probably adultery in marriage how many times i would forgive my partner I will look at this from two different perspectives. That is, being in a relationship, not yet married. If I am not yet married to my boyfriend, that would be very difficult for me. And I don't think I can take it more than twice. But then, in marriage, I'm a Christian. And that is where I stand. In talking about, in reading about forgiveness in the Bible. So, as the Bible says that we should forgive 77 times 7. That is as many times as we can forgive. If it is my husband, it means that I'm I'm bounded to him and it's a covenant. Therefore, I have to help him out. So definitely, no matter how many times he cheats, I will be able to forgive him and then continue. Cheating is when uh, the other the other partner uh, engages in other emotional stuff with another person who is not supposed he's not supposed to. Let's say when a man. Um, takes uh, or becomes emotionally attached to another female who is not his, uh, his girlfriend. That's what I think cheating is. And I would not forgive a cheating partner because it doesn't take one day to cheat. It takes a lot of time to cheat. So if you wanted to be with me, you would not go through that process in the first place. So I think cheating is a very bad thing and I will never forgive a cheating partner. So we've talked a lot about cheating. What if now you've realized that you have been cheated on? or you have yes your partner has cheated on you what are you going to do forgive but how many times are you going to give forgive your partner for a cheating act it depends on how many times the partner has actually cheated on you oh if, so the more i cheat the more you forgive i won't tell you i won't say the more you cheat the more i forgive mm. but then you know we are in a relationship we are working to have a life together now we have a life together does it mean that you are going to cheat on me? Do you actually fancy doing it? Okay, so let's for, say... For how many times will you really forgive me if I cheat on you? At most, three times. Three times. And it depends on the... And the on the intensity of the crime or the uh, cheating. Sometimes it could be... Some cheating are like moderate, you can accommodate. Or like deleting a text message <laughs> from the other person so that you don't see. It's I, cheating. Actually, it's, there's forms of cheating and you can overlook some but then when it's actually serious i don't think you have to go beyond three times some people say if the relation it depends on the relationship, if it's a marriage i know that i'm their husband okay and so i'll not i'll forgive my wife but i'll help her through the process of you know staying away from me i see forgiving me. not to be a bad thing forgiving it's good. It's good to forgive a cheating partner because it will show how strong you as a person you are, how strong to accommodate certain things, how strong you are to move on in certain situations. So forgiving is not that bad. But in cases that is so extreme that a, the person has been cheating on you before you got married or cheating on you for a very long time, that one, it seems it doesn't mean I think when you are actually caught in the act of cheating, you, uh, it wouldn't occur to you to cheat again, depending on the reaction your partner actually gives to you. Okay, so if I know a chronic cheat, then you may want not to cheat again. That's okay. But uh, I'm just a bit curious. Now, we know a lot of things, especially with technology. What are some of the things that you wish you knew? Okay. For me, initially, I was thinking relationship was all that happy ever after thing. When you get a partner, you just move on. Crazy there wasn't any ups and downs or any problem. Until I grew up, I entered into a relationship that I realized relationship is not all that sweet. There are better sides, and if you are able to overcome, you can have a success. For me, I, I think that life is not all about you. You need your family, you need your friends, but you need to actually choose the people that should be around you because the people who are around you will determine who you will be in future. And I wish I 
knew how to save a lot of money so that would be a rich person <laughs> guys are used to rich be rich <laughs> Okay. Because if you respect us when we have money, oh, they yeah. say money talks. So it's normal for me to... Money is what you kind of actually, person. If you don't have a good attitude and have money, I'm not sure I can give you that respect. Okay. okay. Um. Also, soon, let's go for a quick break. We'll be right back. back from the short break in this segment we are going to talk about for how long are we going to keep the memory of a disease partner in our memory okay before then how do have you ever uh, lost a person dear to you before yes i have i think everyone has lost someone dear to mm -hmm. him or her before so it's can you share the experience of losing a person so close to you okay with me it was my grandma and the other was my grandfather. I was very close to my grandma. And she dying was like, I lost something valuable from my life. For so me, how was the experience like? It was how painful. did you go I, I, I couldn't imagine living without her being there. Because we used to do everything together. We eat, sometimes I feed her, she feeds me, she teaches me a lot of things and all that. It was a painful experience. Meaning you were able to pull through at long yes. last. For me, I think it's my own dad. It was a very sad, sad time for me. Uh, it, I, it was really very difficult for me to accept the fact that I've lost my dad. Oh, and sorry. even now, what I miss so much about him is that he used to have this cap that he used to like to wear all the time. Wherever he's going, he wears a cap. And his handwriting, very beautiful. Aww. When I take letters that he wrote to my mom and I read them, I feel like, oh God, this guy was a really good guy. I, I, I still think a lot about him. It's not, so it's not easy to forget or to take away the memories of a diseased person. So yeah. how long does it take? How long did it take you actually to forget? Well, I, I think what is what helped me was I had to accept the fact that my dad is no more. I had to accept the fact that, yeah, once you are born, the next thing is to anticipate death. And so death has come and I don't have a choice. Whether I'm sad or devastated, there's really nothing I can do about it. And so, so the first thing I did was to accept that, yeah, my dad is no more. In accepting that your dad is gone, he's still gone. You still have the memory. Does it mean that you live with the memory now, or you've discarded it, or you've you've been able to assimilate it with your everyday activities? Well, I think I still have memories, fond, very fond memories of my. my For my, the my memories, dad. they are natural. They will come. They will come by. You will always be thinking about them day in and day out. You, mm. You'll be always thinking about them day in and day out, but it's up to you to overcome those memories or you, you know how to deal with those memories. Yeah. Okay. I see. Well, as she said, sometimes when you are really close to the person, it is very difficult for you to forget, but you just have to know Talking that. Talking about the close. How Talk did you survive it? <laughs> with me, with my grandma, I, I just had to accept that she's no longer there and that I have to move on, I have to live, and my parents were there to actually sympathize and empathize with me. So how did you get over it? But before talking about getting over these um, fantasies and stuff, let's talk about relationship itself. Let's say you lose a partner, or one loses his or her partner in a relationship. Mm -hmm. How long does the person have to stay faithful, or stay tuned, or stay faithful? Keep thinking about yeah, the person. Taking, in relation to marriage. In relation to or marriage, even, or even, even in a relationship. relationship. That is not necessarily a, a marriage. Normally, if it's marriage, it should take you a year, because there are some rights and rituals. You are in a society. You can't live with those right, without those rights oh, and okay. rituals. Okay, but I'm then sure. personally, it depends on the individual. If you, are, you have a strong heart, strong mind, you should be able to overcome it within three months to five yeah, months. Yeah, I also buy that idea. For instance, in Ghanaian setting, in Ghanaian traditional setting, 
the widower or the widow is supposed to be in black for a year. And during those times in black, he or she is not supposed to get into any form of relationship. So he has to stay faithful throughout those one year. And um, being um, it dependent on the partner itself, when you are ready, when you are ready to, the, um, or when you are being taken away from those dark period, the days that you'll be wearing those dark dresses, it depends on you to either go in for another relationship or to still stay single to the rest of your life. And if you take a look at this, most people, after losing their disease partners, they just stay um, unmarried for the rest of their lives. So, so as, after five years, they move on. Others, after two years, they as, move as, on. As I said earlier, when it's all boils down to the partner. Even though there are some rites and, rites and rituals, that you have to customs and that you will have to, have follow. to follow. Okay, yes. so those ones are they are you, you don't have a say. You don't have. They a are say. determined by the society. Yes. But I'm sure those the the duration varies from society but to society. But it, it, it varies. But mm. these days it doesn't really take long for the partner to be in the black for a year. I know of one that is forty days, depending on your society. Yeah, yeah I think in terms of religion, that's where that yes, is. Because I know in Christianity, especially in the Catholic Church, what happens is that when you lose a partner, especially the women, mm -hmm. when you become a widow, they you go to church and um, they Their put cross. a very big cross, like the cross of Jesus on your neck. <laughs> mm -hmm. So wherever you're going, everyone knows so that. So that's in relation lost, to the Catholic Yes, mm -hmm. religion, generally. Religion. So, yeah, and then you are expected to wear black all the time for 40 days. Uh -huh. So you count from the day of the departure of your partner. Okay. So, so, so the 40th 40 40 day. day. Then so on the 40th off. day, yes, on the 40th day, you go back to church, actually, they pray over you days, you know, they go through all the rituals, and then they take off the cross. So after the 40th day, you are now free to, to want to go into to another relationship. You want. Yes, another relationship. Okay, looking at the other aspects, which is not the Catholic, the uh, partner actually wears the black cloth for the same 40th day. But then now it depends on you, whether you want to wear the ring or you want to give it off okay some people just take the ring off right after the burial service some also keep it on those people who have made up their mind never to marry again to the rest of their they life keep they will on. keep it on others to take it off right after the burial service then they move life on with wow. their mm, but see, so but that was this on crazy so when you go to islam too what happens is that according to the holy quran they say um when you lose a disease partner it's always on the women. I don't know why women are those that are always burdened with these things. You are expected to mourn. You are expected to mourn your partner for uh, four months, ten days. Mm -hmm. So after four months, ten days, the eleventh day after the four months, you are you, you are free. You can remarry. You can go into another relationship mm -hmm. and all that. But the issue really is, how do I know I'm ready to, I'm move, ready on? to move on? How do I know that I'm ready to move into another relationship? Okay, let's take this scenario. You were married your husband or your wife has passed away. The fact that you are able to face a society, whenever they talk about your diseased partner, you don't actually feel bad, you, you, you feel okay. You don't leave the setting when they are talking about your partner. You are able to even join in and laugh. Yes, you accommodate the, the stories and laugh about it and make it interesting you remember the good times you had with the person yeah i think that's when you are able okay. to move on i also think when the person is ready to move on that person accepts another or he opens up to others to also come into his, uh, yes to come into his or her life so that and he's also willing to take those people out meet family members with them um, so I introduce the person doesn't have probably introducing the, the new, new person to, to the world. other family members yes, and to the friends world. and family. So when you are in a position like that, it means you are ready to move ready on to into move on, yes, another relationship. To forget about. But how do we survive those things? How do they survive them? First of all, you need to accept that your partner is dead. If you are not able to accept the reality that your partner is there, I'm not sure you'll be able to move on. But it's a difficult task to do such, accepting a person that you've been working with for a very long time. Let's say some people lose them after 12 years, after three years, and you just say, I've accepted okay. his no more. It's a difficult then, process. Then the problem will be, if you are unable to accept that you have lost your partner, then you, are, you move into a relationship. Then you keep thinking about your that is why But that can actually affect your new relationship. Yes, yeah, but that is why some people actually go in for um, 
therapy. They go in to the therapist to, for counseling to be able to give them um, antidepressant. Normally, they are depressed and all that. They give it to them so they'll be but able to normalize. What I also think is that they should, first of all, after accepting that they've lost those partners or those partners have gone and gone forever, they should also try to, certain things that remind them of their partners, they should, they should do away them with. Off. Not dispose them of because some they will dispose be them. Some no, 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 but wait, 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 wait. Give them to people. Get shared no, wait. Them. So if if I took photos, let's say wedding photos with my deceased partner, oh, you can't dispose, no, you <laughs> you can't can't dispose, dispose them. Of. Those ones should actually uh, be a way of remembering but you the good times. Put them you closer the to you that you op- you always be open during that them. time. No, but wait, wait. I, like I could stuff. want to go into a relationship with somebody. I will tell the person, okay, this is it. I had a husband. I loved him so much. He's no more. This is for the if my the new person does not have a problem with that. It does not necessarily mean once I have those photos closed. No, by, the I'm new person might person. not it's have It's not problem. the new person w- mm. which is the problem. It's you. You need to actually overcome it so you enjoy the time you have with the new person. It's if not you like you're disposing the pictures of who you are. Actually, some people they gather them down and they keep them somewhere when they are ready to face the fact to actually remember that the person has good memories with them then they bring it out they put it inside there but if, if you actually know you can't face don't it do away with then just put things. it outside you will always be like comparing your current one to your past you will okay. always be comparing them you okay. maybe my past was do- or my disease husband was doing this or that for me and now he is doing this or that for instance when your disease partner always spends more time with you then you realize you have ended up in another relationship where the person is always busy or does not have those time for you then you start comparing even in terms of let's say sex you start <laughs> comparing other things so I think you should and do away with those okay. things then, those okay. memories then you move And on. so once you start doing comparison, that one can actually affect the relationship will, will affect positively relationship. or negatively. Yes. And it will still put you in the dark, you never move on. And some people are able to overcome it by um, doing what they love. You know, when you... you, you oh, they engage in other they activities. They engage in activities okay. that exposes them to the world. Mm. They, they, they are able to free themselves out and work on things that actually makes them happy apart from their partner wow so um, okay so finally what i'll say before i leave here is um dating is dating definitely you get a dating a date that will be full of cheating and stuff but it depends on the individual to overcome them to accommodate certain things and move on and i hope by god's grace everything will move on (laughs) (laughs) it's for me on my on my part I think you shouldn't think about cheating. Everybody is human. Everybody is vulnerable. You should be able to accommodate with your partner. You should be able to know that um, you being a human being, it's likely that you will cheat. So when your partner cheats on you, you should take it slow and cool on the person. Learn to forgive and work out things together. I think what will actually push someone to want to go into cheating is when there's a lack of communication between the couples that's one thing and i also think that in terms of moving forward you will have to accept that you have lost your partner Mm -hmm. and it will help you to be able to move forward and you'll be happy that you have found yourself so there should be transparency in our activities exactly and trust yes well guys this is where we draw the curtains remember if you have uh, if you have missed this show you can catch a repeat on saturday at 9 10 a.m and at 14 p.m and you can also watch this episode through our various social media on facebook it is the daily trend at the daily trend tdt and on youtube it is the new world tv the daily trend playlist until we come your way again next week my name is gracious and it's goodbye